All right, let's learn Redux. Redux is great because it changes the Flux framework and provides some ways that really help you avoid a lot of complicated bugs that can end up in a Flux-like application. At first, it seems really strange because it does a few things very, very differently. Um, and they don't seem to be advantages at first, but I promise if you have more of a complex application, um, it's going to be worth the time it takes to set up Redux at first. So kind of if you're starting with React and you're just building a small component, just use React, keep all your data in a state on your maybe layout level component. If you're going to be building more of an application, use Flux. Flux sets up very quickly and it's really stable in a lot of ways. When you start getting into complicated data scenarios, complicated chains of events, that's when you need to go to Redux because it's really going to simplify your application and the time it takes to set up Redux, which is more than Flux, it's a little more frustrating, I'm going to be honest. Uh, but the time it takes to get Redux set up is really going to pay off over the lifespan of the application. So let's kind of look at how Redux does things. I'm going to take a few minutes just to talk about it in this video. And I promise it's going to be time that you save in the long run. Because if you understand Redux going in, it makes it a lot easier to get up to pace with it. So the biggest thing they change is really over here, the reducers and the one store. We'll start with the one store. So you don't have multiple stores with Redux. You have one big store, and instead of multiple stores, you have multiple properties on that one big JavaScript object. So whereas in our prior application, we would have a to-do list store, we would have a settings store, and then we'd have maybe a favorites store. Um, in Redux, we would just have one big JavaScript object, and that's our store. And it would have three properties. It would have a to-do list property, it would have a settings property, and it would have a favorites property. So it's kind of multiple stores and it behaves like multiple stores, but you keep it all in one giant JavaScript object that we never mutate and we never change. We never actually change this object. We only create new versions of this object. That way we always have a full history way back from the time our first, our app booted up in the browser to wherever you end up, you have a full history of the exact state of your application every step along the way, every change along the way. And we'll get into that a little bit more. But the key thing is the store is immutable. You cannot mutate any value on the store. You only ever create a brand new store object. Um, so I'll do a video on immutability in JavaScript because JavaScript really doesn't do immutability natively. Um, it doesn't do it very well anyway. So we'll kind of get into immutability in another video if you don't really know what that is. So you've got your one store and then you're going to wrap your entire application, your entire React application, all their components, you're going to wrap them with one provider component. So if you're normal, your base uh, component is a layout, then your base component will be a provider component in Redux. That's really the only big change you make to your components. Um, and that, com that provider component, when the store changes, it re-renders your whole application every single time, no matter how many changes there are, always re-renders the whole application, which is we've already established. React does very well due to virtual DOM. So you've got your provider component listening to the store. And then the only thing that changes in the components area is you've got smart components and dumb components. And this is really just good React architecture anyway. Um, but you've got these React, you've got these smart components and they're the top level, like page level. Some people call them pages. Some people call them containers and put them in, containers, in a containers folder. Uh, but they're smart components. They're aware of your framework. They know how to pull a property off of your store, say the to-dos list piece of that store. Um, and they will take the to-dos list and they'll inject that array of to-dos into all the child properties. Say you've got your dumb components, like your to-do list component. And all it knows is give me a list of to-dos, it's an array, and I'll spit out a to-do list for you. I don't care if you're using Redux, if you're using Flux, if you're using Relay, you give me a list of to-dos and I'm gonna spit out a to-do list for you. So your smart components, again, are the only things that are aware of Redux. And then they pass, they strip the data off of the store and pass it through. Um, and then these components trigger actions. And that's the part that's the most like Flux. They dispatch actions. And those actions can dispatch other actions. In our Flux example, um, an asynchronous action might dispatch a fetch data action. And then when the data comes in from the, from the Ajax call, it's going to dispatch a receive data action and it's got a payload of all the data. Or if that errors out, it might dispatch a fetch data error action and the payload will be the error message. So actions work a lot like Flux, no real big change there. 
and the reducers is the other big piece that changes. So instead of having multiple stores that all manage their own data, you have multiple reducers that all modify the a piece of data off of the store, but they modify it in an immutable way. They always create a new chunk of data to go back on the store. And we'll cover that again in the immutable video. So instead of having those three stores, you have three reducers. Um, one reducer will probably work off the to-do list portion of the store. One reducer will work off the settings portion of the store. And one reducer will work off of the favorites portion of the store, the favorites property. And what's cool is, is they can all react off the same action. Let's say you're in the settings view over here and you click on the button that says, don't show completed or hide completed because it's a to-do list. So then we trigger the hide completed action. And then all three reducers probably care about that. The settings reducer cares because we need to turn hide completed to true. So that way that button will toggle in the view on the next render. Um, and then the to-do list reducer cares because we want to now filter out the visible. Uh, we want to set uh, visible to false on all the ones that are completed. And then on the, the favorites view will probably do the same thing. All the ones that are completed are also visible false. So then all of those act all at once, blah, blah, blah. None of them depend on each other because they're not talking to the same pieces of data. They simply all make their changes. The store updates, the component re-renders the entire application. There's no wait for going on uh, because they all act on completely different sets of data. So that's kind of Redux in a nutshell. That's kind of how Redux works. Um, and some key benefits that Redux really provides is it's a really simplified data. Because there's one store, uh, that's pretty much it. All your data comes from this one thing. There's really, a, most of these racing conditions you would end up with are out of the picture now. Every change of any kind means a complete application re-render. And because of that, we also get to do time travel history. That store is going to keep a complete list of all the store states all throughout time. State one, state two, we made a change, we made a change. And if at any point in time you want to roll back your application while you're debugging, uh, you simply say, hey, let's render this one right here. Boom. And then the provider component can render the application in the exact state it was in there. Um, or you can travel back even further. Let's render this piece of the store state. And as long as you did a good job coding and you never changed your actual object, but you always created a new one, that's going to work flawlessly. That's going to work very well. So that's Redux in a nutshell. That's going to help you understand it a lot more as we get into the code. I'm going to go ahead and put together an immutability in JavaScript video for those of you guys who don't know what that is. And then we'll get into coding Redux.